Hi, I want to welcome you to the program today. I'm Jeannie Waters, and I want to first off start off and apologize for my faith, my lack of faith. You know, even as a minister of the gospel, a teacher of the gospel, I've been serving the Lord since 1999. Um, I'd been doing this program, and for the last two weeks, I closed down because I felt like that I didn't have the finances to be able to continue on. And I had seen a lady last Sunday, and she said, I didn't see you on the program on Sunday. And I told her my situation. I said, financially, it's a, a struggle to, to continue to pay the bills. And I lost my job a year ago, and unemployment has stopped. And so I was having faith. I wanted to continue on, but I quit the program. And so this lady comes up to me after I had spoke that to her, and she blessed me financially to continue the programs. So I want to first apologize that my faith was not out there and that there is people out there that are watching that it's making a difference. I saw another lady at Walmart and she said, I've been watching you on the programs, but I haven't seen you in the last couple of times. Well, I'm back and I thank God for it. I'm excited about what God's going to do in this year. I do need your support, though. If you want these uh, programs to continue, you can become my partner. And later on, we'll show you how you can connect with me. But I just wanted to tell you, sometimes our faith is uh, weak in areas, but God. He's able to supply our need and provide for us, and He shows me that over and over again. Today I want to talk about how do we cope with change. I know there's been a lot of change in my life over this last year, but sometimes it feels like I'm on a roller coaster ride. Now, some of you may not like roller coaster rides. Uh, I used to like them. In the last year, I've not rode any. I've gotten scared. I don't know if it's because of my age or what, but I used to love to be on them. But you get strapped in, and they lock you in, and you can't get out. That's one feeling I don't like anymore. And you start off, and you go up a hill, and it's always steep. And you don't know how far the, the hill's going to be when you come down, but you, you're, you're thinking, okay, I love the ride. So you go down the hill, you go around curves, you may even do somersaults. Whatever that you're doing, you're on that ride and you can't get off. Well, spiritually, I feel like today there's people that are trying to cope with change in their life. And they feel like they are spiritually in life on a roller coaster. And I believe that God doesn't want us on that up and down hill. Even though life will, will throw us things like that, we can have a solid, peaceful ride. And so change is always around us. The seasons change. We go from hot one day here to cold the next day. I know the kids can wear shorts to school on some days, okay? And before they get off the bus and get home, it changes the degrees outside, 32 degrees. Now, I don't understand that sometimes, but change is all around us. And, you know, they'll, they'll go to school and I'll see how they're dressed and I'll be like, okay, you need a jacket today because the weatherman says it's going to get cold. It's going to drop 20 degrees. So we have to prepare for things like that, that change is going to come. Uh, the gas prices change. People's minds change. Um, the economy is changing. Having a best friend move away causes changes. Some changes are good. Some changes are bad. One good change in my life was finding Jesus Christ. That's a good change. It is different, but it's a good change. And you say, well, how has it changed your life? Well, my husband and I do not argue the way that we used to. We do not uh, have um, a lot of the turmoil in the house. Um, there's such peace and joy and love like we never knew there could be. So marriage is a change, a good change. I remember having to pack my bags and move out. A little, little uncomfortable to be away from 10 kids in a home and going to a husband by myself. That was a change, but it's still a good change. Marriage is a, a good change. Name changing in the Bible was another thing. Can you imagine getting a new name? Genesis chapter 17 verse 5 says, No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, for I have made you the father of multitude of nations. Genesis says that Sarah, his wife, was going to get a name change, and she was going to be called Sarah. 
Now, we can look at that spiritually, too, that God gives me a new name. My name's Jeannie, but, you know, he, he may be calling me something else now that I'm a Christian. But can you imagine in our own society changing your name? When I went from Jeannie Murphy to Jeannie Waters, I mean, I had to fill out a bunch of paperwork. I had to send it off to the state, and that's what it took to change my name. Change can be good, but change is not always easy. Genesis 32 and 28 says, Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. So whether it's a name change or uh, the weather changing, the seasons changing, calendars are changing, uh, people changing, there's going to be change. So how do we cope with change? Change isn't always easy. But it often provides us an opportunity to grow in life. We must acknowledge that there's only one thing, there's only one thing that we can control in life, and that is how I react to this change. So the only way you can control anything is yourself. Change may turn your world upside down, just like on that roller coaster ride. But it's how you react that makes the difference between coping or falling apart. I know that my kids are like, Mom, stop screaming. And I will scream the whole ride, especially if, it, if we go upside down. And in life, that may be the way you're feeling spiritually. I'm screaming inside. I want off this ride. But I'm going to tell you in a moment how you can cope with this. Some people blame others. You know, you, why did you get me on this ride? How come you uh, talked me into this? I wish you didn't talk me into this ride and we're on the ride. Well, spiritually, blaming others is um, most people's response. Blame won't solve anything or turn uh, anything around. It will more than likely make you bitter and leave you feeling hopeless and helpless. Except that you cannot change others. You need to know that you can only change yourself and how your actions are towards others. So it's up to you. Okay, so let's cope with change by knowing we can't change others, but we can help change ourselves. Let's look at Adam and Eve on the blame game. In Genesis 3, starting at verse 1, <clears throat> Genesis chapter 3, we're going to turn there. Talk about blame here. It says here, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, and make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband that was with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee? Thou was naked. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Hmm. Imagine that. He was right there with her. He knew what God had said, and he still partake of the fruit, even though he saw her do it, and he, he could have said, you know, no. But a lot of times we blame other people for our choices. We need to look at change as an opportunity. Change is an opportunity to re-examine our lives, to see where we have been going, where we've been uh, uh, 
what we've been doing, what we've been making of our right choices or wrong choices. Paying too much um, time and money and effort, uh, leading a lifestyle that isn't bringing you happiness, rather than making choices that make you the leader of your life. Some bad changes that I've had in my life over the last year or so is I lost my, uh, my dad. Um, he was 83 years old and he had cancer and uh, he fought it for a good long while and it was very hard. And so some of the changes that we go through, it's not easy uh, going to my mom and my dad's house. Um, it's my mom now, you know, and so it's a hard change. And I know that she is going through a lot of changes. And so you may be dealing with grief, loss of a loved one. Grief can lead, though, to greater understanding of our cycle of life. Because now I know I'm going to die, and I see that cycle. We lost a son that was 24 years old. That wasn't easy. Life is precious, so it'll make you step back. Change that happens to us, even though it's good, can be turned around, uh, or even though it's bad, can be turned around for the good. And so it'll make you move out of complacency. You know, you'll start thinking, oh man, life's short. And it can help you renew your time spent with your family and your friends because it is so precious. Job loss. I lost my job a little over a year ago, 15 years at a company here in Harrison, and they moved it to Memphis. And that's a big change, no longer having those finances, but God. So job loss can, can lead you to meeting wonderful people. I wouldn't have stepped on out where God's called me to and, and would be doing these programs right now because I would be sitting behind a computer working for a company and I would not be able to continue to do what I feel that the Lord has called me to do. And I'm meeting wonderful people and I'm finding more possible uh, uh, job opportunities and new things to do. So if you've lost a job, listen, there is a creativity in you. There is a job skill that you need to find out what it is and change with it. Go with it. It can also help you see how little you've enjoyed your last job but clung to it, because I did. I clung to that job because of finances, insurance, and all these things. And it'll be a, a total surprise to you when you find out that you really didn't like the job after all and that that was the only reason why you did it. And so change can be good. So occupation changing, upgrade it. Work in something that you really want to do because you know what? Then it's not work. You'll love to do it. Many deal with a change of location. You know, you've got to get, get up and move to a location so that there is more job opportunities. Let's look at Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. And it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, go from your country, and your kindred, your family, your father's house, to the land that I will show you. So he had to leave it all. What a change. I think a lot of the times the reason why we don't change is because of fear. And we need to have faith in God and trust Him. He said, and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. So see, he had to leave to be able to be made into a great nation and to bless his name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whom, him who dishonors you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Did you know change is real and necessary in our life? For salvation, we must change our mind. We must repent and agree that God's way is the best way and that our way isn't. For spiritual maturity, we allow the Holy Spirit to change us as it is written. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, which means changed, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. That's in Romans 12 and 2. So there's always change going on. It's just how we cope with it. Let's look at another change here. Acts chapter 9, verse 1 through 12. See, we're talking about a spiritual change now. I had to change. I mean, you know, I decided to get up and go to church. I didn't clean up before I went to church. I didn't clean up before I came to God. He took me just like I was. So I didn't change anything like that. What happens is he starts changing the inside. And so we have Saul, which his name was changed to Paul later on. 
Let's read about him. Saul was an angry man who did not like Christians at all. And I'm putting this in my own words. He yelled and he screamed at them. He made nasty threats. He beat them and sometimes even killed them. Saul was definitely not a man anyone would want to try to be friends with. On this particular day, Saul was traveling to the city of Damascus. He wanted the leaders of the city to give him permission to hurt more Christians. He and his friends were making their way along the dusty road, discussing what they were going to say to the leaders and bragging about how happy they would be to, to receive the permission to persecute Christians. But suddenly... From out of heaven came the brightest light Saul had ever seen. The light surrounded him. He tried to cover his eyes to shield the light, but it was so bright that it still hurt his eyes. He fell to the ground trying to get away from it. Don't we try to get away from change, things that we don't understand? He wanted to get away from this. Then he heard a voice. It was unlike a voice he had ever heard saying, Saul, Saul, why do you want to persecute me? Saul, not recognizing the voice, said, Who are you? The answer came back, I am Jesus. Of course, Saul was terribly afraid. He was shaking and trembling and could hardly speak. In a weak voice, he said, Lord, what shall I do? Jesus replied, Go into the city and someone will meet you and tell you what to do. The friends that were with him were astonished. They didn't see the light. They didn't see a person. They only heard the voice. They didn't have a clue what was happening. When Saul was able to get up off the ground, he uncovered his eyes, but guess what? He couldn't see anything. His friends had to hold his hands and lead him into the city of Damascus. Wow, what a change. Mm, and we think we go through some changes. Totally blind, having to be led by the hand. The light was so bright, it had blinded him. For three whole days, he couldn't see anything at all. While all of this was happening on the road outside the city of Damascus, something else was happening inside the city. The Christians were becoming fearful because they had heard that Saul was on his way. They knew he was a cruel man that didn't like them. They knew what terrible things he'd done to other Christians, and they were getting quite worried about it. There was a Christian man named Ananias who loved the Lord very much. God spoke to him in a vision, telling him, go down to the street to find Saul. Now Ananias had heard all the stories about Saul, and he wasn't very fond of this plan. Ananias spoke to the Lord, what if he hurts me? What if he wants to kill me? Are you sure about this, Lord? I'm sure we can all understand that Ananias had those feelings and hesitation, just like my faith on this program. The Lord spoke to Ananias again and he reassured him that everything would be fine. Ananias found the house where Saul was staying and went in for a visit. While he was there, he prayed for Saul and the blindness left him. The Lord healed him so that he could see again. Saul stayed in Damascus with the Christians. He became good friends with them and learned from them. It wasn't long before Saul became a preacher teaching people about Jesus. Everyone was amazed. They couldn't believe that this was the same person that had hated them so much and wanted to kill them. Saul was changed to Paul, and he wrote the New Testament, a lot of the scriptures in the New Testament, two-thirds of the Bible. Saul changed to Paul. So God says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, to everything there is a season and a time, and a purpose under the heaven. So these seasons and these changes that we are going through, even though it's summer, winter, spring, fall, whatever the season that you're in, there's a purpose for it. God has a purpose. There's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time of war, and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. 
Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. We got to accept some things. We all like comfort, habits, change. Did you know it takes 21 days to change a habit and 21 days to make a habit? Some of you that's made resolutions in the first of this year, I know I have. It's going to take 21 days to change some of the habits that I had and to, to change and make some of them. There's going to be change. We must accept that. That's what he says. There's a time for all these things. And there is a purpose, God says, for it. So not only, not only do seasons have their purpose, but times of our lives have a purpose too. That means there will be times when we will laugh. There will be times that we will dance. There will be times that we keep and we love others and be loved and have peace. And the time that I have been in, the seasons that I've been in the last year, it's been of crying and letting go of loved ones. And it's, it's been hard. But the Lord says, joy's going to come in the morning. This season will change. That's life. There will be times when we cry and we mourn and we grieve. We give up. We fix something that is broken and we have to deal with war. So maybe you're in a fun season. Maybe this has been your year of a fun and life has been treating you so good and you're happy and your family is great and your friends are with you and you're doing well in school and you have donuts for breakfast because I'm on a fast so that you know is out of the question but it does sound good donuts or biscuits and gravy what could be better you think life is good but maybe you're in the season that I'm in a sad season of life right now maybe someone you love has died recently Maybe you're trying hard in school and your grades aren't getting better. Maybe friends aren't there for you and, and, and they're not uh, being there for you and, and parents are fighting a lot. Whatever the, the, the season that you're going through, um, I want you to know today that your season will change. Bad times and good times will come and you will change. <laughs> your friends and family members will change. Your home, your school, your church may even change. Even hairstyles change. You should have seen my hairstyle in the 80s. We had this thing where it was poofed up way high, and so I've even changed. My kids don't like my hair poofy. That was in the 80s. So things do change all around us. But you have to know today that God will never change. If you have a relationship with Him, He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always be there to help you through. God says that He has made everything beautiful in its time.